Hey, welcome everybody. Mark here at Blue Glow Electronics. Hopefully a fun and educational little video today. So, the question on my mind is, what is one of the most overlooked things that I see when people restore vintage electronics? I don't care if it's a stereo, this happens to be a power supply, you name it. Take a guess. Well, the picture might tell it all. It is the heat sink grease, okay? And I can't tell you how many times I've either bought offline something that someone says has been fully restored or someone's brought something over that they've fully restored. And I, the first thing I start looking at, you know, heat sink grease. And I notice that this stuff hasn't been replaced. And I'm thinking, hmm. So all you recappers out there, and I know some of you probably go to this step as well, but a lot of people have gotten into this recap. Everything's about recap. If I replace all the caps in the unit, it's good. Well, not necessarily. Let me show you why here. All right, these little style cases right here, the T03s, they're really easy. You just pull the screw out one side, pull the screw out the other side. Not much to it. And then you can actually pull out the unit. But you can see on here, this heat shrink grease, look how much of it is actually touching at this point, the metal of this transistor. That's, by the way, it's a pass transistor, so it's conducting a lot of heat. I want, I'm just giving it to you from different angles. There's a whole section over here, all the way around, where it's dried up and there's nothing there at all. You got a little bit here in the middle, but not much of anything. And what's happened is this stuff has dried up over time and it's shrunk and it's pulled away from the metal so you really don't have anything conducting and pulling the heat away from this onto your heat sink, which is the whole goal of this heat shrink grease. And if you'll notice on the mica here, all the way around, look how dried up this stuff is. Now, um, this power supply, interestingly, ran underneath my desk for 20 years, okay? I'm not saying that this did cause a problem, but somewhere down the next 20 years, it probably would. Um, but you can just see it's crystallized, it's dried up. There's no stickiness to this whatsoever. So the repair is really simple. It's a paper towel. It's get this old stuff off uh, the best you can. It'll take a little bit. You'll have to work with it. And I just, the reason I like paper towels for stuff like this, you just throw them away when you're done. You get all this old stuff off. But what you're trying to get it down to is just plain, clear mica here is what you want at the end of the day okay once you get that you do the same with the actual transistor it was hard to believe how little heat shrink grease was actually on this transistor so this thing's sitting here passing current right and it is uh heating up and the whole time it's really not passing any of it off so you just wipe it off there We'll do the same thing over here on the, uh, the actual heat sink itself. This stuff flakes off really easily. Look, already gone. There's a lot of heat shrink grease out, heat sink grease out there. I like this one the best. It's the MG Chemicals 860. Um, and let me tell you why. One, it comes in a decent sized little container here. But two, it stays nice and moist. It doesn't separate. I've had other types, especially if you buy some of the knockoff stuff. When you go to put your finger in there, there's a pool of, of liquid and then you've got a bunch of dried up grease. They, it separates. This stuff seems to do a really good job of not separating over time. And all I do is get a little bit on my finger and you just wipe it around. You don't need a ton, okay? It's just, uh, just enough on here. On one side, I do the same on the other side. And that's all I apply to the mica. You don't want gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs of this stuff. Um, let's see if I can hit the hole here. All right, that's what I'll put back on at this point. Let me clean my fingers off. A lot of times when replacing these, you need to hold the little things on the back from the other side um, and then push it back in. Otherwise, you'll kind of push the uh, retainer out the other side. Once you get that, it's super simple here. And there again, I'll hold the other side till I get this somewhat screwed in there. And different ones use different attaching mechanisms, but you get the feeling here. 
and you kind of just snug it down finger tight nothing crazy I wouldn't use a power driver or a drill or anything of that nature and we're done that's how quick it was so I could replace all four of these in 10 minutes easy flat yet people don't take this step and they're running their transistors way hotter than they need to like I said doesn't matter what kind of equipment uh, these, these things need that grease it's a dielectric grease to help transfer the heat to the heat sink but yet the whole purpose of the mica and this dielectric grease one is to keep it electrically isolated from the chassis itself I want you to see this one I pulled the next one up here okay look at this like there's just a little bit of heat sink over here all the other has dried up stuck to the mica and really not performing any role whatsoever here it's crazy all right similarly on a unit with like a small little TO 220 all you got to do is take the top screw out and sometimes there'll be an insulator that isolates the collector uh, from the chassis and that happens a lot in like uh, ham radios CB radios things where you got a metal chassis and monitor car radios around the outside you've got all these chips but watch this you can separate that just bend the pins over just a little bit okay down in here you can see the grease look <laughs> it's not everywhere use a q-tip get the old off take the other end of the q-tip here put you some new grease on it and I might have got a little bit much there put you a little bit of grease down in there like that smooth it around put that back on there and you get the idea there mount this thing back together guys it takes a minute I'm telling you to do these things it's not it's not a long complicated drawn out process and when you get done um, you're good to go for many years and you know then that your transistor is conducting to the heat sink effectively and efficiently hey 30 years from now will I need to replace that grease again yes I hope I'm still around and I'm able to replace that grease in 30 years all right guys I'm going to wrap this last one up I think you get the idea but please treat your vintage electronics well while you're at it replace this heat shrink grease it's one of the most overlooked things I constantly see I cannot tell you how many nice beautiful Marantz units that somebody probably paid fifteen hundred dollars for can been completely recapped and it's still got 30 to 40 maybe 50 year old heat shrink grease in it so Thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully see you guys again soon. I'm making a video on restoring this power supply. You'll get to see that as well.